In this section, I want to look at an interesting theory about how ideas spread. Now, in his book, The Tipping Point, How Little Things Can Make a Big Difference, the Canadian author, Malcolm Gladwell, explores the ways in which ideas spread. Why, for example, did hush puppies, a brand of shoe that for a long time was seen as old-fashioned, suddenly and almost inexplicably become fashionable among young people around the world? Gladwell says that ideas can spread like viruses, passing from one person to another, like the common cold. And a joke is a really good example of this. Uh, if you've ever been told a joke by somebody and then heard it again the same day, perhaps, from someone completely different, well, that's because jokes spread like viruses too. And so do ideas. But you need to create the right conditions for them to spread, which is what the tipping point is all about. Gladwell talks about something that he calls the law of the few, identifying research that reveals the key types of people who help ideas spread. There are three important roles in spreading ideas, says Gladwell, and he calls them connectors, mavens and salesmen. Now I should just say that the term salesman is the one he uses in the book. Um, it doesn't refer to men only, so I'm going to carry on using the term, but with that caveat in mind. So what are connectors? Connectors are, he says, the kind of people who know everyone. A connector uses their network to connect other people to one another. For example, they meet someone and start talking to them, find out something interesting about them, and then they do something to put that person in touch with somebody else, somebody else they know, who could help them pursue that interest or develop an idea or fix a particular problem. Connectors don't necessarily know lots of people well. There's, there's a limit to the number of people we can call friends and keep up with in any meaningful ways. And in fact, in The Tipping Point, Malcolm Gladwell uh, talks about that magic number. What is the, the magic number, the ma maximum number of friends that we can actually have? Um, connectors are more like walking databases of names and key information. They're really walking social networks, um, a bit like Facebook, but uh, without all the cat videos and baby photos. A maven is a Yiddish word, uh, a, a, a Jewish word, a Hebrew word, um, meaning connoisseur or expert. So you might be an expert in wine or cookery um, or even a particular TV program or kind of music. But what turns you from knowing a lot about something into a maven is your desire to tell others about it. Now, there's a big difference between someone who constantly goes on about their favourite topic and a maven. The first type tells you all about their hobby, whether you're interested or not. You might react by pretending to be interested or by trying to get away as quickly and politely as possible. A maven, however, only tells you about something if they're sure you'll find it interesting or useful. For example, if you're looking for a new car, a maven who knows about cars will pass on information they've read somewhere. Now, in actual fact, that the maven might not know an awful lot about cars, but may have read something about cars, and so they'll give you that information too. So a maven doesn't necessarily need to be an expert on a topic. They are the sort of person that just collects information. So they can help you navigate through a maze of information or point you in the right direction. They won't spoil things for you. So in this image, I've shown a maze with someone asking for help. So a maven isn't the sort, the sort of person that spoils the puzzle, but they might be able to point someone in the right direction. 
So like I say, a maven doesn't have to be an expert in a topic, they just have to have information about it. And they're like an information sponge, they absorb information. They can read a newspaper quite quickly, they can scan websites, um, and then they can tell you weeks later about an article they've glanced at, if it comes up in conversation. Mavens gain a lot of pleasure in passing on information that helps other people. They rarely try to advise. They're not, they're not persuaders. That's the job of our third category. So salesmen, or salespeople, um, they help you identify a need you may not have realized you had, or they can help you solve a problem. Unlike mavens and connectors, salesmen often get paid to use their abilities. So a salesman may try to convince you about something because they've something to gain from it, rather than because they believe in it themselves. However, that doesn't mean that all salesmen lack a sense of ethics. Many with this skill stick to things that they believe in. A good salesman doesn't work by wearing you down, that's just being annoying. We've all been uh, dealt with by bad salesmen in that sense. A good salesman persuades others by taking complex ideas and breaking them down into simple concepts. For example, buying a car is not easy. So while a maven might give you information to help you decide, things they've read about fuel efficiency, resale value or safety tests, and a connector might put you in touch with somebody who knows things about cars or who has good deals on cars. It's the salesman who tries to identify the things that you value or need in life. So they'll steer a parent to the car with lots of room for car seats, for shopping and for bikes. And they'll steer a single person to the car that maybe makes them look successful and attractive to others. Gladwell says that salesmen make ideas sticky. He calls this the stickiness factor. And he gives an example of a college in the United States of America that tried to persuade students to have an immunization against tetanus. So they produced leaflets to inform students about the service, but without a lot of success. So they produced more leaflets, this time with graphic images and worrying facts to try to scare people into getting the shots and again without a great deal of success. In the end they simply provided a map of how to find the clinic and what times it would be open. They had a lot of success. Now the last approach worked because the others sort of overcomplicated something that was very simple. Get yourself immunized. The more complex the argument, the more difficult it is to process. So when you tell someone, if you don't do this, then terrible things will happen, they can go into denial. That'll never happen to me. Or they decide they don't want to think about it. But making something simple, here's the clinic and here's when it's open, makes the idea sticky, to use Gladwell's term. So how do these three types of people work together, the connector, the maven and the salesman. Well, the first thing to say is it's not important that all three types of person work together to spread an idea. If you've heard these descriptions and thought, well, I'm a bit of a maven and a bit of a salesman, or even if you said, I don't think I'm any of those people, that's okay. The theory doesn't mean a person is one type or another, and it doesn't mean everyone falls into one of the categories. I would say that I'm a maven, that I'm quite good at sort of collecting information and then passing it on to people when it might be useful. But I'm not a salesman and I'm really not a connector. You might want to read The Tipping Point for yourself. I really do recommend it, as Gladwell gives uh, a number of examples of how these people spread ideas as well as some other theories. 
and we're going to be looking at another one of them in a later part of this module. So depending on the message or the issue, a different type of person can be useful at different times. So you need to think about your project. If you're getting it off the ground, perhaps you need to find a connector, someone who will know something, uh, or rather know someone, who can help you with a specific issue like finding funding or getting medical advice or educational advice. The person they connect you to might be a maven, someone who enjoys helping other people by passing on information. But maybe your project is at the point where you want other people to know about it. So you should probably find a maven who, if they meet someone they think will be interested, will pass it on. Or perhaps you're at the stage where you need to convince other people that your idea is a good one. You want them to support it, or you want them to make use of it. In that case, you probably need to find a salesman to work on your behalf. Or you need to learn the tricks of being a salesman yourself and make your idea sticky. Try to take a complex idea and make it simple, make it easy to understand and easy to do something about. So in the next section, we're going to look at another idea from the tipping point. But for now, like I say, you might want to put it on a list of books to get hold of. It's one of those books that really makes you think, and it's also quite an enjoyable read as well. Um, every time I recommend it to people, they end up lending the book to other people and having to buy another copy for themselves. I think a lot of the ideas in it might help you as you try to get people to support you or use the service that you're creating.